let's break the mold. Start believing and stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. Welcome to Wild on 7, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. And welcome back. This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast, as always, presented by Pilot Games. This is a special edition, though, because we are off-site. We are at uh, a beautiful setting here in my hometown of White Bear Lake. We're actually, uh, it's Hockey Day White Bear. Uh, we're in between some games. You got the, the Bears practicing right now, getting ready for their big matchup Saturday afternoon. Um, John, what do you think about the setup here? Look, I mean, it's beautiful. They've done a great job building a city on a couple soccer fields. You know, I was here two days ago, and it looked like the salt flats of Utah. There was nothing. There was like one guy carving a bear out of snow. And I was like, well, this is, we got no shot. Come here two days later, we've built a Reporting hockey metropolis in, in the middle of Polar Lakes Park. It's pretty it's pretty amazing. It takes a village. Is that the phrase? Yeah, it, it takes a village. It, it is amazing, too. And so there's been that we have to give a shout out to the local organizing committee and Nick Guzzo, Corey Roberts, John Anderson, Mike Schwartz. And um, I know there's plenty other around with that, too, that have helped Lisa and the Steiners and everybody. So they've done a terrific job. And I keep walking around asking them, like, hey, you guys need a hand with anything just to take a little task off their plate. But they're uh, they're cool, calm, collected, man. They're confident. They, they did their planning. Everything looks good. Yeah, and, and what a special white bear day it is. We're all in our white bear gear. I, we have actually 33% of the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame for White Bear Lake. Um, our guest today, yeah, it's Brian Bonin, Woo! former Holby winner. Brian Thank you was for the big named, audience out there. Hey, this is a Mr. <laughs> Hockey from 92 White Bear Lake High, drafted in the ninth round of the Penguins. We'll get into some Yager stories. Golden Gopher, two time WCHA Player of the Year, two time All American. He's on the wall at Mariucci. Holby in 96. Professional debut with the IHL Cleveland Lumberjacks. Played with the Penguins. I think he faced off against Gretzky, if I have that right. Brian Bonin, welcome to Wild on Seven. Mr. King, Mr. Carter, thank you. What the heck? Yeah, Hockey Day and uh, another shout-out, Carts. You know, those, uh, those names you mentioned, they've been working on this for yeah. quite a long time. Yeah. You know, this isn't given to you. No. you got to work it, and uh, oh, so grateful for that crew. Right, no kidding. They've put a lot of sweat into this, <laughs> and uh, well, you know, I think they, they can't hear it enough. Thanks for putting it all on. It's, it's going to be a great event. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get into the wild game last night. So speaking of White Bear and White Bear Hall of Fame, um, Justin Braun and the Philadelphia Flyers came to town, um, and it was a Broad Street Bullies kind of game. Uh, the Wild, although they, they were a little bit better in that regard. But let's just, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. We should have, it's Hockey Day, White Bear, and Tortorella comes into Minnesota, scratches Justin Braun. We should have come up with a plan to go abduct this guy, bring him here, and let him spend the weekend with us. Would, I mean, Tortorella probably would have noticed he's not there, but Brauner, man, we need him here trunk of a car old school russian yeah just this don't worry about it right. torts we'll don't worry about it. i am going to say since it is hockey day we are doing this on a live remote on a stage you might be hearing some noises the audio might be a little bit different so if you're going through this and it sounds a little bit different just know it's because we're we're kind of in the back of site. a booth we're, we're on in the site. the wind is blowing <laughs> that's what's great <laughs> it is it, we're kind of half outside i would say um that game you know the seven street savages against the broad street bullies right um, i think my favorite moment so it's hockey day minnesota we have a booth here, uh, and we had on the TV the Wild Game. There is an 80s cover band playing that essentially sounds exactly like um, Freddie Mercury. And everybody's watching the Wild Game in the corner. Yeah, yeah. People are pulling chairs out of my booth, like just, oh, I'm, they're going over, crawling over the booth, sitting in a chair down. And when Zuki scored that goal, it was just amazing. I'm like, they call it Hockey Day for a reason. It, it could have been the real Freddie Mercury on stage, and no one was going to stop watching that OT. It was awesome. What a goal. Yeah. We talked about this morning, too, Zuki's skills, uh, right up there with Brian Bonin's skills for sure. Um, but the, the Wild, uh, I think, I don't know, they're a team that's, 
there, there's no question they're struggling to score right now. I think you can see it. They're gripping their sticks. You had Matt Dumba scratched, and then for this one, Ryan Hartman scratched. And um, if you, I think if you're the staff, you're you're like a little bit frustrated because you don't want to have to do these. You're on a three-game skid, and you want like your best players to be playing well to figure it out, be able to flip a switch and go win one, stop the bleeding. Um, but the, the coaches like to maintain consistency and their voice in the room. If they have to scratch somebody for not playing well and they did it the night before, they've got to do it the following night. So they, they've got to sit Matt Dumba, tough choice. He comes back in the lineup. Now they think Ryan Hartman probably should be out. So he sits against the Flyers and he's the kind of guy that that would play well against the Flyers, right? Like get under your skin, <laughs> but the wild. And I think, it, I don't know if frustration was it actually, but it was like, all right, if we're not going to beat you, we're going to beat you. And, um, you know, Ryan Reeves kicking it off big fight with the um, I think I saw Marcus Foligno throw a body shot that crippled his guy and then Mason shot Duhame too. So um, they found a way to get it done. OT skills of Matt Zuccarello, Boldy. Um, we should get into him. His game was great last night. What do you, Brian, I got to ask you, cause you're that kind of player. You got an eye for it. Like, what do you like about Matt Boldy's game? Well, I'm going to start off with his height. Yeah. I mean, he's got this reach <laughs> and this ability, um, you know, to be honest with you this year, again, you, you know, you're looking for certain guys to step up and, you know, all of a sudden, I think it's from the beginning of the year, if I remember correctly, Boldy's on the power play. Yeah. And yep. he's back like up on the blue line at times, yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, this guy is pretty good. You know, 26, 27 years old, maybe, you know, I think 21. he's 21. Yeah, he's 21. 21. I mean, what the, Oopsie. so yes, just, just this uh, knack for the game. And I think we'll get into it you now to today too, of just certain folks have a skill and a, you know, eyes behind their head. Um, so to add him to the mix now, Zuccarello, gosh, I like him. Yeah. Kiprasov, I mean, enough said. Um, yeah, to lock him in for seven years, really exciting. Baldy. But he's just, yeah, yeah he's able to, uh, you know, draw people in. That reach, that, that height, it just forces someone to take a little bit more of a step and, yeah. and open something up. Yeah, he's one of those, he's, he's still learning the nuance to it to bring people to him. Like he's, there, there are very few guys in the NHL, if you ask me, that can slow the game down to their pace. Like Matt Boldy, he's not going to beat you in a foot race more often than not. So he, and I don't know, I don't know if he understands it or not, but he plays this way that he can slow it down to his pace and he can go lateral east and west. He's long. He can use his range and his reach, but then he's also skilled. Like a, a guy I think of, and I'm not comparing him to him, but Anze Kopitar is one of those other guys too. He's like not fleet of foot, but he's super successful because he's figured out how to draw people to him, then how to distribute the puck. And Boldy's right there now um, where it's as, as soon as he can dial in like the pass shot ratio and getting the, that decision right more frequently, his numbers are just, in my opinion, just going to skyrocket. You know, last night I'm watching him and I've heard this story. A guy went to see this rock band that I like and um, he met the lead singer afterwards and he said, I always thought he was six foot five because he's such a rock star. And when he got off the stage, he was a lot smaller. Matt Boldy looked seven foot seven, seven by seven, like seven by earlier. seven, 49. He, he looked like <laughs> the stud yeah. that we just paid for last night. And you guys were having an interesting conversation that I thought was, you know, on the broadcast the other night, somebody said, you know, it gives a kid a lot of confidence <laughs> to sign a $49 million <laughs> deal. Yeah. And I started laughing watching it on TV. I, I bet it does, you know, I bet it does. But you were saying um, generationally, there is something about younger players now where, if the marketplace says, hey, buddy, you're a stud. Yeah. Then they kind of wake up in the morning and go, guess I'm a stud. Better be a stud versus the old days. Right. And I think you could see that. Like if, if, if after signing this deal, he, he gets better instantly, there is a correlation between that contract and his play. And motivating young players these days, and I don't know the cutoff, right? I really don't, but it's probably somewhere around the latest lockout where guys used to have to kick them in the butt and that's what got them going. Now it's a pat in the back. You can't give some of these kids a kick in the butt and say, let's go. And I think you, you sometimes see that too. Like Dean Evison can give Ryan Hartman a kick in the butt. He can give Matt Dumba a kick in the butt. You can't give these young guys kicks in the butt. That They'll just shut down and not play. What they need is like a different kind of reinforcement. And then a new contract is that to them. Like they need that positive affirmation like wow seven by seven I got seven years here they think I'm gonna be that good wow maybe I am good now his chest is puffed out a little bit he's able to make some plays I think at the same time what what I think it was Lewis talking about on the broadcast is when you know you got seven years 
it's okay to make a backhand and play through the middle of the ice because you know you've got seven more years, right? So all of a sudden you start executing those plays and uh, it, it changes a little bit. But um, I, I do think that it's given him confidence and he's going to be a better player for this deal. Well, you mentioned Louie, Nanny too. I believe Louie was quoted way back. At, I want a guy in the last year of his contract. Yeah. You know, it used to be just... I want, I want you to really yeah. feel this thing. Right. And then maybe I'll give you two years, <laughs> you know, and you had to perform or um, find somebody else. So it's really different. You got to tell your Yager story. This is one of my favorites when you're in Pittsburgh and talk about having to earn it. <laughs> tell us the story about when uh, you briefly were line mates with Yaramir Yager. Well, it starts off, I think, with the first year. I, I think I told you, too. I, I get there, and we get out for practice, and Lemieux and Yager never wear helmets or shoulder pads. You know, <laughs> this is the for practice. Practice? practice. Outstanding, Every practice. by the way. And, uh, yeah, Eddie, Eddie uh, Johnson's the coach. Brian Trottier is one of the assistants. And, um, you know, I'm like, so this must be a fun skate today, you know, or whatever. But we're going, like, relatively hard. And then, you know, there was a rule, training camp, you could only be on the ice for so many hours. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I just get there. I'm a little late signing. So I want to, you know, shoot a couple pucks maybe, and people are leaving the ice, and Lemieux's over in the corner at the door. Let's go, get off. We're done. <laughs> That's Only enough. Only so much time, yeah. you know. I'm just like, okay. Um, and then, you know, like in terms of the weight room and some of these other things, um, oh gosh, just classic. Went in there a couple times. We had a couple Russians on the team, and they're on the bike with no clothes on. You know, um, <laughs> it's just like it was such a different deal. Um, so two years later, yeah, Lemieux's hurt. And, uh, and uh, better find know, a winger. For yeah, him. Well, yeah. And, and Pittsburgh was going through some money problems. <laughs> and so they kind of went back to the IHL and grabbed a couple of guys who were really good players, um, like Robbie Brown, a Kip Miller, and kind of resurrected them. Like, well, let's see if we can make something happen. I mean, that's really what I think they were doing. So I kind of got a shot, and my roommate, Jan Herdina, ended up making the team over me, I'd say, just because he ended up playing center on that, on that line. Um, but yeah, I actually had a tough time scoring goals. Yager made it so easy, so easy, that I kept like flubbing it on the side door. And I think he went with his countrymen instead just because like, who is this guy? Like he can't, he can't like finish. But I gotta tell you, it was literally like, hey, are we gonna make a put? It was unbelievable. <laughs> just on your stick, right in front oh. of the net, and you're, you don't know what to do because it's like he fast forwarded the tape. I love that. He, I like that he just looked at you too and was like, "You made like two mistakes," and he was like, "Nope, this isn't gonna work." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uncle, oh. and, and, and scene. Yes, and as like the center iceman, you know, he, he was so good at, at, and he was so fast, but he didn't look fast. So you learn really quickly. He'd pass it to you or someone else, and you would give it right back to him. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. give it back to him. And, um, you know, on that team, they kind of, again, they resurrected Martin Straka, Robert Lang. Um, Yager had his second most points that year. He played with Miller and Herdina. They each had 40 points. Yager had 127. God, amazing. Power play? I mean, well, I don't know what, but the next closest guy had like 70. Such good hair, You're just too. like, what's going on? And what was, he was like Boldy, though. When you speak Boldy, here's the deal with Yager. Long stick, big butt, so you couldn't get in there. He could pass or shoot in the same motion, and you, you never saw it coming. Mm -hmm. There was no load, mm -hmm. like a Joe Sackick. Right. Or, and it was just like, oh. That, you know, it's funny. That guys look silly. We've interviewed uh, a couple goalies this year, and they both say the same thing about Zuccarello. They say with mm -hmm. that stick, he doesn't do any of the normal release. He just kind of just masks it, just masks it and snaps it off the very end of the stick, and, and it's in the net. Yeah, it's good. When you watch the Wild Bond, and... Um, like, who do you identify with? Who's the guys you're like, you know, I like his game. Or, uh, I mean, you mentioned Kaprizov earlier, our, yep. our baby uh, Russian that's <laughs> laying in the manger behind us. But what, who, do you, who do you find yourself rooting for on the wild? Yeah, as a small, skilled guy, I mean, Kaprizov, it's like, who wouldn't want to be that guy? Yeah. I mean, he looks like he's having so much fun. It yeah. looks like it's so easy. But in, in some ways, a Zuccarello. Um, when you talk about Boldy, too, I think Zuccarello really pulls guys in yeah. and then gets past them. He is so good. Um, he's so sneaky. It, um, I don't know if I would be good enough today, though. These guys are just so good. But I have such respect for that and would like, like to be that player. He looks like he's having so much fun. Yeah. Um, even when you stop him, it's more like he's thinking, you had no clue what I was doing. Right. You had no clue. And yeah, he wants lucky. to trick you. Oh, he's, he's just. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, that breakaway. The, I don't know who was playing defense on that, but. Yikes. And I think he goes a forward. And that's a, that's a smart player. He's a smart player. 
Like you don't, I actually don't see Zuki attack a guy one on one off and through a guy's triangle and try to beat him. No, I don't. But think But that's I've ever recognition seen. from a smart player. And, yes. And being a forward and attacking, you know the sixty out there, and you look up and you're one on one with a forward. Same. You're almost like licking your chops. Because he can't even, even escape back. Even for a plug like myself, yeah, because you just don't know. And I've been in that spot. You're like, I don't, I don't know the angle. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I think I stand like this. Make sure I look at their hips or something. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got this, and then they're behind you. You know, read your jersey. Time. Look yeah. at his jersey, not yeah. the puck. Yeah, uh, it's so I, good. I want to go back to uh, speaking of long stick. I want to go back to Yogs because I played with Yogs in Jersey, and w w I remember a bunch of stuff playing with him because it was it was later in my career. But I just wanted to soak it up, and he had he had changed. I think who he was as a person a little bit too. So he's a little more to himself and quiet, which maybe was normal uh, early on in his career too. But he would have four sticks. And I think I've told this before, but they would be four different lengths. Like most players have to have their sticks like precisely cut, like laser measured cut, because even the smallest difference, they can feel it. And then the lies off or something's not right. He would have four and the, it would probably vary a foot in length. So each one was probably <laughs> three inches different from shortest to tallest. So we'd go in for our morning meeting. He'd watch the video. And probably he wouldn't even listen to the coaches, but he'd just see how they play in their D zone. And then he'd pick which stick he wanted for the night. So if it was, if they're going to have two guys jump him in the corner, he's going to use a short stick because he wants to play in his feet. Because he knows that once he gets one guy on his butt, the other guy's not going to be able to get inside of him. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, he uses a long stick. So then all of a sudden, nobody's going to be able to get to that puck because only one guy's coming. I can get him on my backside, and then I've got all the room in the world to make a play. And then he'd have other ones if he wants the power play or net front or... It's like so, wardrobe changes yeah, so, for Lady Gaga. I've never seen anybody do this before, right? I've never seen – everybody's sticks are always precisely the same. But he was like a cerebral player too. Like he thought about every nuance. His skates, his steel would be so short. And then he'd have like two lifts in his skate. And you'd ask him like, why are you doing that? Like that's so much work, dude. <laughs> like what? And he's like, I can turn a little sharper with – a higher lift and less steel, and then my skate's a little bit lighter, and it's like, you, there's no <laughs> chance you can tell. Was, but he believed it, man, and he put up, he made, he produced. When you were in Jersey, was he doing the, he was notorious for those weight vest workouts after you played, like he would go skate afterwards? They I don't know, maybe him, this was at the very end. They had to give him a key to the training facility because he'll come back. So he would have some workout program that he was on, and his final workout would have to start at like 11 p.m., so everybody else would be like long gone, places dark, and he'd come in. And then, yeah, that's when he busts out like the weirdest exercises you've ever seen. He'd have like cables hooked up to him to like the Kaiser machine. He'd have a weight vest on. He'd have ankle weights on. And then he'd be using a stick and shooting a tire against the wall. And you're like, how, how, was he do how are you doing all this? That's that Eastern <laughs> European. It's like when Carell was flipping that tire in the rain yeah. when we didn't know if we were going to sign him. We do got to mention we got Carell behind us. I don't know if you can see him. Uh, one of my joys of hockey day is, you know, hockey day is really four days long nowadays. And, and so we get to bring Carell home at the end of each night and bring him back to the booth. So it's almost like I've got a little baby Carell that I have to make sure he's safe at the end of each night, bring him home, wrap him in swaddling clothes, and then bring him back to the booth the next morning. And that's what you're he talking looks, about because it's the painting behind us here. Yeah, the license plate art behind us. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that. but um, And you take good care of it. I take real good care of it. Like, is it, you're in a new house. Does he, does he have his own bedroom over there? Well, I would say if, you got him in if a crib? he had his own house um, and he was in, uh, I don't know which one we're doing here. I'm going to steal it. I'm going to surprise you. If <laughs> Kirill was having a restless night of sleep, let's say, and he woke up crabby and disgruntled, felt like he had a headache, he could be one of the 30 million people that are suffering from sleep apnea. Correct. Or the 20 or 30 million that don't even know it and they haven't been diagnosed. What I would have them do is reach out to Gem Health Minnesota. Yeah, Gem Health. Com. Gem Sleep. Yeah, that's what I would do too. So um, if <laughs> I'm not you know this what? is like me it's, with Yager. It, it this is like takes... Bonin with Yager right here. You're just going to take over. Finish. <laughs> yeah. If it's. <laughs> Thanks for the pass. You're, you're playing the middle today. <laughs> he, he, this one, no good. No I thought good. you were passing because that's our bit. Usually the bit is you pass. I know. I didn't like, know if you, you like were you trying to get goals. me to do Gem Health or you wanted to do um, you Aquarius. You could do it. Just, just finish gym health. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is, this is why I thought is more often than not sleep apnea is, uh, well, not diagnosed, but it's found out or captured by 
your partner, somebody else, right? Because they're recognizing you're not sleeping well, you're snoring, whatever it might be. So uh, if you have a husband or a wife that seems to wake up tired, they're struggling a little bit. Um, and this place is like wants to be the concierge of sleep apnea. There's there are barriers to entry and getting treatment for it. And that is, it's too much work, too much testing. I don't want to go there. Gem Sleep solves all those problems for you. They make it easy. One-stop shop. Check them out. Uh, it's like yeah. Uber. It's like Uber. It's like Uber. Push a button, sleep, sleep better. Yep. Gem, Gem Health. Health. Boom. Nice job. Thanks. Do you want to go into another one or maybe we break? Let's yeah. break it up a little bit. Let's talk fights for a minute because there was some misinformation here at Hockey Day. So I don't know if you found yourself walking around. The wild game was it would be on in a tent and then it would be off in the tent. And so I'm like, yeah, I guess Reeves beat someone up, but then they beat up Felino. And then yeah, and I heard, so I'm like, I heard so Felino got yeah, beat. I heard Felino <laughs> get his ass kicked, right? So I'm like, this is not good. Like this is gonna be a problem for our team as a whole. So I'm on the treadmill or on the elliptical this morning watching all just the fights. Felino had a great fight. No problem yeah. whatsoever. Maybe they were talking. Shaw was the only one that seemed to have a little bit of a, he kind of fell down early. But, you know, Reeves and uh, those two guys, that was like when you're fighting with someone that has a nuclear bomb. Like they were not going to actually land any punches with yeah, each other. Yeah. They had the long arm, yeah. just locked, two smart guys. Duhame's fun to watch fight, by the way. That guy fights like a junkyard dog. Yeah. I mean, he, and he's, he, he's not a very big guy, right? And he just throws them. Yeah, that's dangerous. Uh, yeah, he he is just a thrower. You gotta like get, those guys. He could get hit too yeah. because he is not thinking about defense <laughs> right. at all. Right. He could go nine eight. Which you have to admire. The end. What ends up happening though is you connect with a helmet and you hurt your hand more often than not. I think more in the end you end up changing your style of fighting because you're tired of your hands hurting all the time versus like not wanting to get hit. You end up learning. It's not getting hit things not so bad because then you're also not punching helmets all day long. You had to wait for your moment a little bit. But, um, yeah, no, it's good to see him. I heard Marcus got beat, too. Like the, the Not true. It was like a game of telephone. You know, yeah, like there was so such so. bad info flowing yeah. around. I but, did like it when you saw the three of them in the box on the huge monitor at Hockey yeah. Day. And, and Felino must have taken his shoulder pads off. He's just wearing a shirt <laughs> in the middle. And I was like, this is, this is old-time hockey at Hockey Day. My favorite part about this whole story, though, is that he – he subtly dropped in that he was on the elliptical the mor this morning. Yeah. That was the whole purpose uh, of hey, him bringing I'm glad you're mentioning subject. that. Look like, good, feel good. He's like, so it's on the elliptical watching these fights here today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, it was funny that all the clips were from, uh, it must have been the Philly broadcast, and the announcers were so funny. They go, another one. Get involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's number three. I no. mean, four fights in a game and an OT winner, you should give – the Excel center, like 20 more dollars on the way out. Right. You know, usually you get like some, a light bulb on the way out of the stadium. You should hand them 20 bucks for that game. Right. What a treat. Are they setting them up now? I mean, we got Buffalo coming into town. That was a big win. Yeah, we got a, we got a huge win. We got a savage Buffalo too. They, they, they we owe them one from that madness we had a couple weeks ago. So Brian, you're, you're known for scoring goals, soft hands, great vision. Um, did you, have you ever gotten into a fight while playing hockey? Besides maybe like your brothers outside? A good way to end that one. Uh, yeah, one. one. I think only one. You oh, know, it, and, and there's some good, well, there's some good stories behind that too. <clears throat> I was going to maybe add on to the Duhame. You, you got you to gotta know who's out on the ice and who you're, you're up against potentially. And I wouldn't want to fight that guy. No. He plays, you know, he always looks mad. There's some too. guys that's scary. He's like, he's, like, he's like the coach. They're just always mad. <laughs> Dean. And there's just something <laughs> as a player, and especially as a skilled guy who doesn't know that realm. Yeah. You got to know who's on the ice. And um, he's a broken so, bottle guy. Yeah. So it was once in the minors and it was another little guy and we were in a scrum, you know, and two guys were fighting. So you're just grabbing somebody and he was trying to get into the fight. I'm like, you know, I can't let you go in there. And he's like, well, then let's go. And it's like, really? The two of us, you know? And um, anyways, he ended up dropping him. And, and so I was like, well, I guess we got to go here. And I think I was just stronger. So it was a lot of pulling and pushing and I kind of threw him to the ground. So that was my no, fight. no punches that counts. though. No, Did you get five minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. good. That counts. Yeah, see, that's nice that's job, when you buddy. get rattled. And the, like, it, sometimes the ref will call those roughs, and you go, you got to go. Other, we got to add on, that man. to Can your you just give me five? Of fame I'd rather thing. play in three minutes, but I need five minutes. Yes, just please. Just This is my one <laughs> yeah, time. Five, and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, it was, uh, I was always really impressed. And when I got called up to the wild, um, my roommate was Matt Johnson. Oh, and awesome. We were, and we were in Detroit. And uh, you, you could see some of that, that fighter anxiety that kind of comes with, um, like you know, what, what's coming. Yeah. yeah it, you know, what's coming. Cause yeah. I got to tell you the next day I went to the trainer. I just said, Hey, I'm kind of new at this, but 
is, is Maddie okay? Because he, he just did not look okay at all. Um, just, and it was almost now I can see after, and West Walls has been really good with some of these stories too. Just, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of in fear for your life a bit because you, 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 you don't want to fight. You, know, you don't want to be up five nothing because you got to fight. You don't want to be down five nothing because you got to fight. Um, and, and, and again, that's a world I'd never lived in, but I saw it. I, I saw it and was, you know, concerning in the sense of, you know, he had done it for several years. Yeah. Um, kind of now I think knew what could happen. You know, the young kids coming up they, they, in the minors, just seeing some of those fighting, and they'd be like, well, why don't our tough guys want to fight these guys? And they're like, nah, I've been fighting enough. That young guy doesn't know enough yet. Yeah. He'll learn, but I fight too much. Yeah. And I could just get knocked out by some young buck, and I fought last night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. want to fight tonight. Yeah. Duhaime fights like a cartoon. It's like uh, his arms are swinging, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's like something out of one of those Hanna-Barbera cartoons. He, <laughs> he goes. It's not a bad strategy, though, because then the other dude's always, like, trying to find his balance the whole time. But it, it, it does only take one in that spot. And then once it, once it gets you, then it's no good. But um, how about face-off? Uh, I heard you, you've taken a face-off against the great one. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, mostly because it was the thrill. In the end, for me, I grew up just idolizing. Yeah. You know, How Gretzky. You and, and so, yeah, end of the season there in Pittsburgh, and they're like, hey, I think he's going to retire. You just, and we just happened to be playing him last game of the, of the year. So, yeah, it was fantastic. And, and Messier came back and coffee. And so, like, you know, growing up loving Hey, did, did you win the draw? Yeah, did you snap it back? We you look, have to look remember at the record. this. I don't remember. What, I, do, what I do remember footage. is he blacked out. What I do re- <laughs> is he's behind the net in the first period on the 99, and he dishes one out and gets an assist, you know, and I think I might have stood up. Didn't raise my <laughs> hands, but I think I stood up kind of like. You were rooting bench. for him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. Uh, You're like, that's his office, guys. I mean, They're like, we know we're playing against him. Because everybody had to have been thinking, like, he's got to get one point. we got to say his name, you know, and, um, and of course, Yager scores in overtime you know, beats a couple of guys and makes everybody look silly. And um, yeah, it was, and we had no one in the lineup. I mean, so it was just, it was, it was awesome. This was Gretzky's last game? Gretzky's last game in, in New York. Um, and, uh, you know, Madison Square Garden is. So is we've been talking better? about Madison Square Gardens a lot on the podcast. Yeah, the walk down the <sighs> tunnel into the obscurity, you know, going from Spider-Man to Peter Parker and that one ramp. Oh. And New York doesn't care who you are. It's just New York. Don't let yeah. Carell hear that behind us, actually. New York's a lot of traffic, yep, stressful. Yep. You can't fish <laughs> yeah. there. Panarin's miserable. <laughs> Panarin's super unhappy. Zuki hates New York. Okay, sorry. I'm glad Carell didn't hear any of that. Um, hey, can you talk gophers a little bit? Where is the Hobie presently in your home? I know it's moved around a little bit. Is it in a sock drawer? Is it in your workbench? Where is the Hobie Baker right now? Uh, it's in the basement in a corner. Jesus. <laughs> hockey guy. Hashtag <laughs> hockey guy. Um, the... Uh, and what do you think of this year's gopher team? You know, the, I went to the Frozen Four last year in, in Boston. It's in Tampa this year. A lot of these guys came back. A lot of these players on this year's team were given the opportunity to play in the NHL this year, and they said, you know what, we're going to run it back, unfinished business. Do you, think, do you think they're the team that can get it done, or are they a little bit too much of a superstar outfit? It's tough to win at, at any level now. I mean, you know, you, even when you're a really good team, uh, not only got to show up with, with your A game, but you got to make those, those little plays. Um, I like what I see. Uh, really nice when you have a decor that's best in the experienced. Country. Yeah, best in the country. I mean, that, that's where everything starts. Um, I mean, Moscow said that several times. I mean, really impressed with Cooley. Uh, I like his game. I mean, our freshman core. That's pretty impressive. You know, when you think about, like, age matters. Um, strength, just wisdom. I mean, you get, you get another year, two, three years of experience playing games, you know, making mistakes. So that's pretty impressive. The question is, in the end, can you... Beat Mankato. Well, there you go. Cards. Yeah. I like it. I like <laughs> that was it. unfortunate. That, yeah, that, that was unfortunate. Um, it but it speaks, to the, you know, it speaks to the wild, too. Back up to the NHL. Playing really good teams, what kind of game do you got to bring? You know, you go home and the Flyers have been playing well, but maybe they're not this great a team. What, you got a whole different game you got to bring, and you got to bring your A game, even if you think you're better. And now we got to change it up and play a, d- a different team, Buffalo. I mean, it's just, and we're in a tough part of the year. Um, as you said, you're trying to motivate guys, and guys want to win. You want to make good plays, but it's such a, a razor thin margin. Yeah. It's such a razor thin margin. So the Gophers, who are so good, I mean, at some point, the other team says, okay, we got to play you one game. How are we going to make sure that these guys don't beat us? Yeah. And you start beating guys up is kind of what you do. If you're in Mankato, you just beat guys up. Yep. I mean, Carts knows that. That's, That's what right. he did. He made, made a living doing it. Bullies. 
<laughs> boys. Oh. But we we are like I think you see it with the wild too. We're at a time of the season where it can be it's a grind. Dog days. You know, it's the it's the dog days. And as much as you don't like to say, look around the league. Pittsburgh is the same. You know, I saw something out of Pittsburgh yesterday where it's like they just need to make a trade to make a trade just because they need ripples in there. They need ripples in the room. You know, it's the guys are going through the motion. It's not for like lack of effort or desire. It's just like something's not right. And you go to St. Louis, the same. Like they lose to Arizona five rip last night. Colorado lost yesterday. Yeah, these teams, like they're, they're struggling. It's the dog days and the good ones find ways to win right now. Not everybody can be Boston where you go like 35 and five and it's good. Um, but it's a battle for everybody right now to try to get to uh, the deadline because everything at the deadline gets exciting again. But yeah, it's moving day. It's Saturday at the Masters for sure. And um, some people are missing their pots. Can we talk about the rivalry, uh, the White Bear Lake Hill Murray? You know, I, I didn't grow up in White Bear, but I, I think this rivalry, besides maybe Rozo War Road, uh, it has to be top two in the state. And I don't think the state knows this rivalry as well. It's a little bit east side, a little bit 651. I believe there will be more people at the game tomorrow between White Bear and Hill Murray than have ever attended a hockey day Minnesota in history. I think it will be the, the biggest crowd. Um, these two teams do not like each other. This is civil war stuff. You know, kids that grew up with each other, you know, different towns. And it is, I mean, I would buy a super checks with, uh, with White, White Bear, Bear Hill. and Hill Murray painted on it. It is that good for high school hockey. What's your take? You're on both sides. You, uh, you grew up playing for White Bear. You got a, a son, a couple sons came, three sons came through Hill Murray. Um, what do you like about this rivalry? Well, I like that it's old. You know, it I think is. when you when you go like top two, if if we went way back in the day, you could pull out some teams like an Eveleth or an International Falls, or you'd, you'd go up north and and even on the east side, you'd probably bring in St. Paul Johnson and and uh, but a lot of those are gone. So this is just stand the, the test of time. It's it's still there and when you become part of one of these programs, I, I guarantee you on both sides, it's a, this is the game. Yeah. You know, this is the game. I wish we still played twice. Um, I, I can still remember going down McKnight Avenue, the back way into Aldrich, you know, Craig Johnson and, and playing Hill Murray. And I'm a sophomore and like, can't wait. I don't even know why I can't wait, yeah, yeah. Um, but you can't wait. Um, you know, they, it, it just kind of created um, in the room and, um, you know, you didn't know the guys back then. It's a little different today because they seem to know each other. And they got more. Uh, there's some deep stuff there. It's 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 spicy. This is yeah. White Bear Hill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For for me, it's it's also one of those things where it, like Hill was always a measuring stick. So it, it all boils down to getting to the state tournament and the section final game. More often than not, was White Bear Lake versus Hill. So that's kind of where it started. And it's we're going to the Coliseum. It's yeah, it's it's at you're playing at Aldridge, but that's a build up. You're trying to impose your will so that you have the upper hand when you get to the Coliseum because it's all about getting to the state hockey tournament. And um, that's the Super Bowl for every high school player. And I think that's probably the the epicenter of the rivalry. It's like we know that if we want to play in this state tournament as white bear we got to get through hill and hill knows and th this was it hill knew too if we're gonna get through there we got to get through white bear lake and then you get the guys where some will leave white bear like i don't think i can't recall anybody that left hill murray to go to white bear yeah, me neither. right it was the opposite where guys would leave white bear to go to hill that'd be so, kind of badass so, actually so if now, you, did. now you got buddies right like buddies at peers that you grew up with that are over playing for Hill for whatever reason that might be, but you're like, okay, now it's even a little bit more motivation. It's like, yeah. we're out on the rink out back. It's mono a mono, two buddies playing. You know, those one-on-ones are intense. Now it's on the big stage. Like winner goes on to play in the state tourney, shake our hair for John to, to talk about. You what know? I love about it is with the uh, walking across the tracks, right? Kids leaving White Bear to go to Hill. They both have to prove that their decision was right. Either to leave or to stay. Right, and it is all there in that game where everybody's trying to validate what they did or didn't do or who's doing it right, and it's great. Do you remember your record against Hill when you were at White Bear? Do you remember, like, did you play him five times? You won three times? Do you have any recollection of that? I don't have a recollection of my exact, uh, no, record, no. But I do I do recall one game. And I, I remember coaches, a coach walking in saying, big-time players play big in big-time games. And it was, all right, Hill's a big game. I better be good tonight. Um, I remember that. And I remember having some good games against Hill, but I also remember having some tough ones too. Like he just couldn't go out and do it. You know, it was, they were good. 
Yeah, yeah and it's, you, you know, in my era, maybe a little bit before me or after, but no one from White Bear went to Hill either uh, that I know of. So, I, you know, I stayed, my dad went to Hill and, and gave me the opportunity. I went and, and toured the school with, uh, with the Strobel brothers and they didn't recruit me at all. And I was like, well, I just want to stay with my friends. Um, and no one before me had gone in the sense of, there was no one saying, hey, come take a look. Um, and so, and I, you know, we had good teams. These were my buddies. I wanted to just kind of, you know, stick around with them. And my dad kind of, he never, he never gave me this, like, we hate Hill Murray, and, but he never talked about Hill either. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting how I never really learned that. I had to learn it when I got there. And I think today there's maybe a little bit more beforehand um, where people are already not liking them. And so it, it's kind of a weird era that I, that I went through there. And you know, I'm trying to think, like, what if someone else right before me would have gone? Then would it made it easier, yeah. you know, potentially? Um, I, I don't know. It, it was never a topic in my house. Can you handicap the game at all? I, I, I don't think Karts and I have watched a ton of the high school hockey yet this year, but the same people that told me Felino lost a fight last night also say, you know, uh, White Bear is having a strong season, kind of a top 10 team. Hill Murray is starting to play a lot better right now. They were playing some young kids, and now they're, they're coming into form. Maybe some of their guys are coming back. What, what is the real story on this game tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> And if I think back to my day, uh, White Bear was always offensive and, and Hill Murray was a little bit more, played more of a defensive game. I don't know if, if Cartsy, you can add a little to that. Um, that's what I've seen the last six, seven years. I think that's what we're going to see tonight. You know, Hill lost 12 guys last year, 12 returners. So of the five, uh, you know, six returners, three have been out, three or four have been out. So yeah. the team is really young. Um, they still, are, you know, two guys are, are out. And so it's probably going to be a defensive style. Um, you know, wait, wait their time. Whereas white bear plays the way I like playing. Let, let's go. Yeah. Let, let's win this thing five, four. And, um, it's, it's going to set everything up for the enemy. I mean, Carter, you're so right. It, it's all about that section final game. And, and so this is a little bit of some, uh, yeah. Proving ground. Some here, jockeying. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Jockeying. So you're, you're, um, and I wonder if the, the game will be, the game will certainly be different than if it's a, it's a section game Yeah. because this one it's, we want to win and we want to, but if we lose, we're going to inflict some pain somewhere to try to get the upper hand on that game. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of a feeling out, too. It's going to be interesting. Hey, John, so if you were going to sit down and watch this game somewhere, maybe the VIP tent and there was no food or you needed a snack, some sustenance to make sure yeah. you could get through it, what would you reach for? Well, I had a lot of trouble getting into the VIP tent, but I would go with Jimmy's uh, Chunky Blue Cheese dressing because it's that time of year, big football games, Joe Burrow smoking cigars. You can put it on uh, buffalo dip. You can mix it with French. Be get super Midwestern, mix in a little blue cheese dressing with French dressing. Jimmy's is family run, Minnesota based, down in Stewartville, Minnesota. Don't you be messing with my dressing. Wow, you really slowed it down there. Yeah, yeah too. it's a hockey day one. You yeah, know, yeah, it's nice. It's like uh, like if it was record store I day. I like it. Yeah. You know what? You yeah, know, what you, should... how was the water on the yeah. ice last night? Did you feel like, and you played in that celebrity game? How did you think the ice was? It was good. It was good. But I tell you what, I wouldn't do with it. I thought about it because I didn't bring a water bottle on the bench with me. That was a miss. Um, I thought about maybe getting some of the snow because it had built up. Um, Brian Bond's good on the edges, so he's kicking up a lot of snow. I could scrape some of that, <laughs> melt it down, and drink it. But that would be gross. So I thought maybe I'll just wait till I get home and drink from my uh, Kinetico system. I've got a nice reverse osmosis right there at the sink. Beautiful, clean, crisp water. There's going to be no bacteria, no brine bond and sweat in it. Um, yeah, so Aquarius Home Services, uh, they solve problem water. Don't you be drinking the snow off of the ice. You know what? We should bottle some of this, though, and maybe save it, pour it on our own ranks. That's a good That's idea. That's a cool idea, yeah. yeah. so we'll have to do that. Hockey but, day snow. Yeah, do that with that water. Drink Aquarius Home Services water, Kinetico K5 system, reverse osmosis, boom, nailed it. That's good. Um, <laughs> hey, so just to finish, I did the celebrity game last night. Couple notes. Um, I got to do this fun thing where I had like a live mic with Zach Halverson, and we were just—I didn't have any idea how this was going to work, but it actually seemed like people could hear it, and you just could walk around and talk to people during the celeb game. But our friend from Bravo, Luke Gobranson, good right. hockey player. Yeah, like, he was like good. good. He scored. Yeah, he had an assist. You know, the eye test, like if you were a scout, you noticed him. There was multiple times I would look at my sheet and go, that guy's good, and it was him. <laughs> so this Bravo kid, reality star, Zoolander. He wasn't. We were kidding, yeah. He, skates he grew on up Blue on the Steel. range. He played outside, yeah. 
Blue Steel. Good player, right? Yeah, he's great. Yeah. yeah. I was, so I don't know what to make. That guy's got everything going for him, apparently. Um, yeah, he you does. had a he's, big night. He's got uh, the good looks. Yeah, he can play. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a, he'd be fun to go out with. And you, somehow we got to give him credit. I felt bad about that because we busted his chops on the podcast saying, like, you should stick around and play the Olympic game. And then he did. <laughs> yeah. so, so you kept him in town two more days. He texted me and I was like, hey, you don't feel obligated. Like, you don't have to. But he, he maybe is the nicest guy I've met. I'm too. shocked how nice he is. I, he said to him, uh, looks like some U9s are crying out in Chelsea Pier. And he just looks at me and he goes, I moved some stuff around. <laughs> it was great. And hey, Karts, I got to give you some credit. Um, not only did you score just a total blue collar in the snot bubble, <laughs> you know, standing over the goaltender goal. Then they trade you at the six minute mark because the other team is losing. The Mariner Dolphins are losing to the Bears. And right after the trade, you score impact player. But then the guy they traded you for, Paul Fletcher, got an empty netter. So it was kind of a wash. But You've kind of been the Dwayne Johnson of hockey day. You're playing in an alumni game, a celeb game, probably a sponsor skate. You're doing the broadcast. Um, yeah, you've got the EGOT. Do you know what's, you know, what's kind of sad is I, I, I suppose there was two goals last night, but really I only took one shot. That first one, <laughs> you kind of just pushed it in, yeah. right? So that's my, that's a great goal yeah. though, as a guy who doesn't like that. That is. Those one are the, of the best garbage goals there are, you know. Yeah, those when, are the uh, I can score this kind of goal goal. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it went in. I woke up this morning and my my side hurt from I, I assume it was from shooting pucks. So it's either the ten pucks I shot in warm ups or the one puck I shot in the game. It's like my side hurt. I was really? like, what did I do last night? Uh, so yeah, one shot is apparently my limit. Uh, but no, that 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 celebrity game was fun. Good precursor. The alumni game oh, is going to be something else and. Um, the rosters that they have constructed. Hey, wait, speaking of construction. Um, nice. Yeah. Whoa, this is crazy. Good job. Wild construction, right? Um, if And I don't know, you've remodeled your house, haven't you, Brian? Beautiful. House. Downtown White Bear? We did it a couple times. Beautiful yes. spot? Yes. Well, if you're suffering ice dams right now, like a lot of the houses that I see throughout White Bear Lake and the Twin Cities because the conditions have been tough and at any point your roof leaks and it's damaged or, or even you think your insulation isn't right, these guys uh, at Wild Construction, they'll take care of you. Uh, they'll insulate it. They'll make sure it's, it's engineered properly. Uh, they'll take care of the damage. They'll re-roof it when they can. Um, whether your windows are leaking, fogging up, whatever it might be, give these guys a call. WildConstructionMN.com. Check them out. But that alumni game, the rosters they've constructed, it's going to be intense. You want to hear some of the – this is the info that's flowing around. You know, remember Felino got beaten in a fight, apparently, if, if you were at Hockey Day. Um, so they're saying the gray team is stacked. And the reason they're stacked is that they have to wear gray, yeah. which is a hilarious <laughs> white too. bear thing. This is like the most white bear thing. They're not in black or they're white not or in orange. orange. <laughs> they're not in white. They had to wear gray. So they gave them the best players. That is, that's literally the most white bear like thing that could ever happen. I've also heard this super random thing. The 2017 team wants to prove something. It's like, what? So I don't know if that team went to state and they're young guys and, and I just can't wait. Cause and I also think maybe the bus is sort of moving around White Bear. It might be a little slippery at the start of puck drop. This this could be a really interesting night at the alumni game. Over under a number of stitches that are going to be needed after tonight's game. Like you'd you'd hope that the line is zero, right? Or can maybe you count one. falling in the parking lot on the way to the <laughs> Treasure Island booth? There there's going to be go some over. sticks. That could, I bet you somebody gets th there will be blood tonight. I think so. And and now you guys are on separate teams, correct? I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I believe not, you're, you're not on the same team. I looked at the okay. list. I get to do the little um, live remote tonight. But, uh, yeah, what do you expect out there? Um, who, uh, who do you think will bring it tonight in the alumni game from a White Bear standpoint? Well, I think if you – Brian Bonin will. He's going to be pulling up inside the blue line and throwing – Dirty sauce all the way across the ice. Nobody's going to see the play develop except for Brian, and then it'll be on somebody's tape on the back door for an empty net. Um, so I expect to see that on numerous occasions. Uh, I, I also, what I fear are the the young legs. If you if you have a kid that is, you know, graduated within the last five years, watch out. They're going to be dynamite. Birkenbein, there's Seth the, King. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing you can do. Just close your eyes. Yeah, just let them go because you can't stop them. Yeah, they I'll can be, go. What are you looking for, Brian? Yeah, I would agree. 
move the puck, get out of the way. Um, I know we got some old timers on our team, so uh, Will Anderson will go tonight. He'll go hard. Yeah, well, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I already said last night, Willie, you're on Carter. And we play <laughs> to just on, on Carsey, and Carsey he's, will try to make some people look afraid. silly. He'll go Rico. <laughs> and and Carsey's really good too at sucking them in. And the young guys don't understand that. They're like, oh, look at he's going slow. Come and on. Carsey's like, yeah, you can have. Oh, but bye. <laughs> so it, that it'll be really fun and funny. But the question is, yeah. Uh, who gets heated by that? Yeah. Versus enjoys. And uh, I, 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 there could be some bad blood between 17 and 18. Is that what we're hearing? 17 yeah. and 16? I, I don't know what the deal is with that. I mean, There's something, lost the fight. All I literally heard is something 2017 has something to prove. <laughs> what, so that's just me just spreading misinformation. What would you have rather seen, though? So I think there was a, a quick discussion on should it be an alumni game, White Bear Lake versus Hill Murray? And what that would have looked like. So maybe pick your best 20 dudes or 20 guys and go have a game. Like no, that, so this, that, that would have been unbelievable. This is setting that me up would have been the best, deadly. Though. The reason we did it this way is it's a tournament and we know White Bear will win the first round. <laughs> so they can break the curse. I'm using that again tonight, so don't worry. <laughs> but I know I, it's our hockey day, right? It's not Hill Murray's no, hockey day. No, but that would have been yeah. unbelievable. Like, can you imagine? It would have been horrible. Hor like, yeah, it would have been horribly it, that's good. Like, like not a good idea. Like a train <laughs> no, I wreck. Can, I can you don't want to watch, but you can't look away. That's like that's like a Civil War reenactment <laughs> yeah. gone horribly wrong. Like, why don't we use real muskets? Like, no, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, hey, uh, Bonin, we got to thank you for coming uh, on. You know, we were, your interview is sponsored by Duke Cannon. How, what are you doing with your hair these days? Are you, uh, is you, do you consider your hair a weapon? Do you use product? <laughs> have you tried any of Duke Cannon's um, grooming products? Funny you ask. Do you I, really? have the, I have the hockey puck shampoo <laughs> as a Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah, baby. And it's wonderful. That's By the way, I, I mean, I just love the name. I don't even care what it is. Yeah, they're I'm going to use it. Yeah. I'm going to use it. Uh, the marketing's great. The name's great. And if you drop it in the shower, do you use a stick and pick it up like kind of <laughs> lacrosse style? Yeah. The Michigan? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the Michigan. You maybe played in that game, didn't I you? I did play in that game. Yeah, that, that was... Now that's so when you gone. hear people, yeah. like, do you call Let's, it the Michigan with your kids or do you call it like the Mike leg? Cause it like separates you from the game a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Mike leg's got to feel cheated. Yeah. He's, he's got to feel <laughs> cheated. True. <The> Michigan <laughs> team guy. He's a Michigan man. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, it, it's the Mike leg, you know, for sure. And, uh, What's so great is is the referees had no clue either. It's like, what, what do we do with this? When is it this happened, what, what what were guys, like, do you remember when it happened? What what ha what yeah. were people saying? Were they mad? Well, I was on the bench and had a re like really good angle. And um, if you go back and look, Steve DeBus, who's a pretty dang good goalie, he, it's not like today where the goalies are going down. He goes down with one pad, but he literally has his shoulder and his yeah. glove over here, yeah. you know? The guy tucks it in the very top. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you can see it. And as it happens, it was like, okay, they scored. How did he do that, though? Because I couldn't really see the stick. I think maybe, maybe because you're like, well, he didn't do that, obviously. Yeah. And he goes and celebrates. You know, and the rumor was after that the Michigan guys were, he didn't practice in this thing. So I think they knew. And everybody else was just kind of, oh, shoot, what do we do now? Yeah. Like, I guess they're going to count that. Yeah. Like, maybe I should try that. Yeah. You know, I think it took college, too, for, like, the college game. There's no fighting in college. So I played with Chris Bonner, too, and I've talked to him about, like, a similar play or, like, a Zegris goal. Yeah, yeah. Where if, if you would have tried that when he was on the ice. Murder you. Yeah, you'd be toothless. He can, Absolutely murder he you. He says, that's fine. You can try that while I'm out there, but you will have a broken bone. You will not play the next night. So don't you think about trying? There's no it. reindeer games with Chris no, Pronger. No, but it, take, it took college hockey for a play like that, and it, it even has taken however many years to finally make its way into the NHL. Like they had to change the style of NHL play for you to start to see it in the NHL, yeah. right? Cages. Like it took a long time for that to be adopted fully. Like I would say, it just happened in the last two or three years. Well, I, I would agree. It's great. Well, hey, anybody that hasn't come down, please come down to Hockey Day in Minnesota here in White Bear Lake. See the village that was built maybe by three guys from what I can tell. Good job for those three. We mentioned at the start, um, come on down, check out maybe the greatest, one of the greatest rivalries in high school hockey tomorrow. We also have a, a girls game, white bear and, and Stillwater. We also have Hermantown and Matamidi. So it's quite it's a, a great slate. Um, it's going to be fun. Alumni game uh, tonight. If, if you hear this in time, come on out and watch the festivities there. And um, we're happy you're with us here at Hockey Day, Minnesota. And thank you, Brian, for spending time with us. Well, thanks, fellas. Always yeah. fun talking hockey. Yeah. We're here. Till it's here. Peace. Go Bears. <laughs>